4 times p minus 2q. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, even though I said this is involving, uh, simplifying expressions involving addition and subtraction, I don't mean that there will never be any multiplication. I just mean that most of these problems are going to be focusing on the adding and subtracting aspect. Later on, we'll do some review problems that focus more on the multiplication and division. So you can see here that you have something inside the parentheses. You would normally work on that first just for the order of operations. However, these are unlike terms. You have a p term uh, and a q term. So I can't really subtract them. I can't do anything with that. But what I do have is a 4 in the outside, which I can distribute the 4 in. 4 times p is 4p. The minus sign comes along for the ride. 4 times 2 is 8. And you have 8q. So another way to think of it is 4 times p is 4p. 4 times negative 2, remember positive times negative gives you negative 8, and then the q comes along for the ride. So you get 4p minus 8q. You can't add these any further because they have different variables. They're unlike terms. All right. <clears throat> what if we had 1 half uh, 2a minus 4b plus 6 on the inside there? So again, I would like to try to simplify everything inside of this, but they're all different. A, B, and then this doesn't even have a variable, so they're all unlike. So all I really can do is distribute the one-half in to each one of these things. And if you're afraid of fractions, I'm going to have to tell you now that you're going to need to get comfortable with it. So go back to my Algebra 1 or even to my pre-algebra and review fractions. Because if you don't know how to multiply fractions or simplify fractions or divide fractions, then algebra seems hard when it isn't hard. But you do have to know fractions. So. We're going to multiply this one half in. So what we're going to get when we do that is we're going to have uh, the way I want you to write it is don't do everything at once. Write it as one half times 2a. You might say, why am I doing that? Well, it's because I want to see what you're doing. Then it's one half times this. So it's going to be minus one half uh, times 4b. Then I'm going to have a plus sign from here, one half times 6. I know that you know that one half times 6 is 3, but I want to see it as one half times 6. Why do I want to see it like that? Because I know what you did. I don't see any simplification. I know what you were doing, and I can see that it makes sense. Now, here you have a 2. Remember, when you have the, uh, everything's multiplied together, and so when you have a number on the top or a term on the top the same as it is on the bottom, they can divide away. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so they strike out and they divide from each other, or they divide out. You have a similar thing here. You have a 4 and a 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I can kind of like strike that out and put a 2 up there. 2 divided by 2 is 1, two div uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I can simplify it by kind of striking through like that. And then what I'll get for the uh, answer, see, once this is all done, the 2's are gone, the 1 is times a. So you just have a for the first term. The minus sign is still here. But when you did the strike through, you still had a 2 and you still had a b. And then everything's gone here except for the 3. So you have 3. So this is just literally simplifying terms. We've covered that in Algebra 1 over and over and over again. You should be comfortable with simplifying terms. This is mostly a review. So again, if you see something like this and you're like, I have no idea why he strike through the top and the bottom. That doesn't make any sense. Then it just means that you've forgotten some stuff from Algebra 1. So go back to Algebra 1. Go to simplifying expressions. And where we do tons of cancellations and get your skills where they need to be. But for now, we're going to keep on moving on and reviewing and pulling everybody up to speed um, with, uh, with your skills. Next thing we're going to have, next problem, 4 squared minus 6 divided by 2 plus 3. So you see what we have here. Now we have to deal with order of operations. First is parentheses. We don't have any parentheses, so we're fine. Next is exponent. We do have an exponent, so we do that first. 4 squared means 4 times 4 which is 16, carry the rest of the problem through. Don't get in a hurry to do too many things at once. Carry the rest of the problem through. Then you look and say, what do I have next? Well, I've done the exponents. Next thing is multiplication and division. So that means I can't do this subtraction or addition. I have to do the multiplication of the division next. So it's going to be 16 minus, what is 6 divided by 2? 3 plus 3 comes along at the end. Now, everything is addition and subtraction. I go left to right. What is 16 minus 3? Well, that's 13. And then I have plus a 3. And then, of course, 13 plus 3 is 16. That's the final answer. <clears throat> the biggest problem that students are going to have when they see this, they'll probably do the exponent correct. But when they get to this step, they'll do 16 minus 6, and they'll get 10. And then they'll do the division later. You cannot do that. You have to do any multiplication and divisions you have first. You then get everything down where you just have addition and subtraction. Then you do that last. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong answer. 
All right. Next problem. We only have a few more of these guys. Uh, what if we have 4 squared minus 6 divided by 2 plus 3? So again, we want to look at what's inside the parentheses, because parentheses always come first. But what's inside of here is interesting, because you have an exponent, but then you also have subtraction. Now, of those two things, which one wins? Exponents win. So you have to do in order, like once you've zeroed into a parenthesis, you still have to follow the order of operations within the parentheses. So within here, the exponent wins. So what you have is 4 times 4 is 16 minus 6, divide by 2, plus 3. All right. Again, we still have parentheses. Now we can do the subtraction. 16 minus 6 is um, 10. I can drop the print. I can write the parentheses if I want, but I can drop it because it served its purpose. 10 divided by 2 plus 3. What comes next? Well, I have this addition, but I have division, and that's going to come first. 10 divided by 2 is 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. That's the answer. Now I want you to look at these two problems really quickly. It's 4 squared minus 6 divided by 2 plus 3. 4 squared minus 6 divided by 2 plus 3. Everything's the same, it's just that we put parentheses around the first term. Notice we got 8 for the answer here, and we got 16 for the answer here. So it's a really good way to see that order of operations matters, because if you, if you ignore the parentheses, you would get the total wrong answer. And that's why we're doing these, to show you that the answer does depend on the order in which you do the, the calculations. All right, the next one is going to be um, let's switch colors, just mix it up a little bit. What if we have 8 times c plus 2 times c plus 3? c is some variable, who knows what it is. 8 times c, there's nothing to really do with that. Inside the parentheses, I would love to do this first, because I'm supposed to, but they're mixed terms, they're different, I can't add them. So the only thing I can do is multiply and distribute the 2 to everything. So I have 8 times c plus 2 times c is 2c, plus 2 times 3 is 6. So I just take the 2 times c and the 2 times 3 and that gives me this. And now I'm adding. So I go left to right. 8c plus 2c is 10c's, because they're like terms. Plus 6 comes along for the ride. But that's actually the final answer, because these are not like terms. I can't add them. When you're adding terms in algebra, just as a review, if they're just numbers, of course you add them. But if they have variables, the variables must match exactly. If you're going to add 3a plus 2a, that makes sense because you're adding a's, right? But if you have x plus 5y, can't add those because they're different. It's like adding jelly beans to donuts or adding cars to dinosaurs. It doesn't work. In order to add things, the terms have to match. Otherwise, you're not adding anything that makes sense. All right. Next, we're going to have, only have three more problems. 7 times p minus 4 times q um, plus 3 times q minus 10 times p. So let's simplify that. So the first thing we say is, well, do we have any parentheses? No, we don't. Next thing we say is, do we have any exponents? No, we don't. Then we say, do we have any multiplication or division? Well, kind of. We have 7p. All these things are multiplied together, but there's nothing to do because we can't really do anything further than writing them as multiplication. So we don't really have any of that to do. So we have a bunch of addition and subtraction. So we work left to right. That's what we've been saying all along. But then you get worried because you say, well, if I'm going to work left to right, I'm supposed to add this plus this. And you say, well, I can't really do that because these are different terms, so what do I do? Well, what you end up having to do is, yes, you do have to go left to right, but you're allowed to regroup terms as needed. In other words, if I really wanted to, I could rewrite this thing. Um, I could rewrite it as this minus this, minus this, plus this. In fact, let's just do that. Why not? Let's just rewrite it like that. Let's say we, we could rewrite it as 7p minus 10p, then this term, minus 4q, then this term, 3q. You see what I mean? When you add things together, 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. Or a plus b plus c is the same as c plus b plus a. It's all, it doesn't matter with addition, the order that you do it. So even though you're supposed to go left to right, you can rearrange anything you want, and then of course now I can go left to right. So in reality, what you do is just add the like terms together. So here you have 7p's and minus 10p's. So just add the 7, or the 7 minus 10. So you're doing subtraction. 10 minus 7 is 3, um, but the sign goes with the larger 
absolute value. So you have negative three, and of course you're, you're doing this with variables that have a p, so you have to have negative three p there. Okay? And then we have, we'll just carry this on, 4q plus 3q. Right? Now we can add these together, or subtract them, however you want to look at it. So we have negative 3p. What do we have here? Negative 4q and then 3q. So we, we have mixed signs, so we subtract them. So it's going to be 1, because 4 minus 3 is 1. Um, and the sign, though, is going to go with the negative 1, because this negative 4 is a larger absolute value. So it's going to be negative 1q. So the, the 1 is implied. I could write a 1 there if I want to. In other words, take away the q, and what if you just had negative 4 plus 3? The answer would be negative 1. So it is negative 1q. And that's the final answer. All right. What if we had 7 times x plus 2 plus 4 times x minus 4? All right, now we have the same sort of thing. I really would love to get in here and add these and then subtract these, but I can't. They're mixed terms. They're, they're not like terms. So what I will end up doing is distributing the 7 in here. So 7 times x is 7x plus 7 times 2 is 14. And I can do this in parallel on the other side with this. 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. All right? So same sort of thing. I've done the parentheses. They're gone now. And I have, uh, well, these are multiplied here. But I can't actually multiply 7 times x, so I'm done with that part. So now I look down and say, well, I have a bunch of addition and subtraction. So I'm trying to add them. I can't really go left or right because you can't really add these. What you do is you collect like terms because I can rearrange this thing just like it did before. So what I'm going to do is add the 7x and the 4x, which is going to give me 7 plus 4 is 11x. And then I have 14 and negative 16 added together. So I subtract them and I'm going to end up with a 2. 16 minus 14 is 2. And the sign goes with the larger absolute value. So when you add these together, 16 minus 14 is 2. The sign goes with the larger absolute value. So you have 11x minus 2. And now you see why in the last lesson we did all of our problems without really any variables, just with numbers. Just to get practice with order of operations and understanding what do we do when we have all these additions and subtractions. Because when you throw variables in the mix, it, it's exactly the same thing as numbers. You just have to carry the variables through, but it gets confusing if you've never done that practice. All right? Final problem. Final problem. It looks complicated, but it's not. What if we have negative 2 times r plus s plus 5, close parentheses, plus 2 times r minus 3s plus 2? So again, I would love to add these, but they're all different terms. I can't do it. I would love to add these, but I can't do that either. So I really can't do anything at all with this. And in fact, there's even no reason to have the parentheses because there's just a 1 out here multiplying, so I can drop it. Negative 2r plus s plus 5. But here I'm going to distribute the 2 in. 2 times r is 2r. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Don't forget the s. 2 times 2 is 4. So there you go. And then what you need to do is all you have left is addition and subtraction on the same level. So essentially all you're going to do is collect like terms. So let's look and see. I have a negative 2r. I'll put a dot under it to show me that I've matched it with this term, just to kind of keep it straight because there's so many terms. What is negative 2 plus positive 2? It's 0. So these terms basically add to 0. So I'm not going to write any of those in my final answer. Now just to switch it up a little bit, let's look at the s terms. I have an s term here and an s term right there. I tell you what, we ultimately are going to write this down. We are going to add and subtract this. But since we've added these terms to 0, let's just rewrite the problem. It'll make it cleaner. s minus 6 s uh, plus 4. Basically, after these terms drop away to 0, we have uh, s, actually we have a little bit more than that, s plus 5 minus 6 s plus 4. OK, so we're continuing to collect like terms. We have this s term, and now we have the negative 6 s term. So 1 minus 6, or 1 plus a negative 6, how do we handle it? Uh, well, we subtract. We say 6 minus 1 is 5. 
5s, of course. The sign goes with the larger absolute value. So it's going to be negative 5s, like this. And then we still have the plus 5, and then we still have the plus 4. Can't add any more s's, so we just carry that down, and then plus, this becomes, of course, 9. So you get negative 5s plus 9. The only thing complicated about this was that whenever you distributed this guy in, you ended up with lots and lots of terms, and you have to collect those like terms. So we just add the r's, it goes to zero, rewrite the problem underneath it, and then we collect the like terms with the s's, adding the s terms together, giving us this, and then adding the numbers together, giving us this. But at every step of the way, we have to write down every little step that we do. Otherwise, you're going to get confused. If you get the wrong answer here, and then you go try to figure out where you made the mistake, if you don't show your work, you'll never find it. Ever. You'll just scribble, scribble, scribble. You'll never get there. So make sure you can solve every one of these problems yourself. Grab a sheet of paper, write them down, and solve them yourself. Make sure you can. And then follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue to get some more practice with simplifying expressions in Algebra 2. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.